about that. The thing about the image was it was so kind of strange and, and esoteric that uh, I, I don't think I got more than one or two calls. So it didn't really work as a promotional tool for me, but I was still very proud of it. And then the next year, when I kind of crossed over into pastels, that would be the early 80s, um, um, I did the same poster, you know, the same assignment for the same director. Plus, the pastel work was starting to get noticed, and I had a piece I had done for um, um, Fred Woodward, my favorite art director, uh, when he was at D Magazine in Dallas, be long before he went to Rolling Stone. And those two pastel pieces both won medals in the society that year. So I followed up my first year, which was like beyond my wildest dreams, with the second year, um, two medals. And then I was on my way, and people started to call me from all over. That was back in those days, in the 80s. Um, it was a very good tool to have a high profile in books like that. You know, because your, your address, your name, your phone number, all that's always published in the back of the book. And, and people do look at those and they do call you, or they did back then. I, I built on that. I didn't slow down. I was always very motivated um, to create more work, to create new kinds of work, to make myself better. Um, I. Uh, I got to a point in 1986 where I thought it was just time to, to get away from the studio. I, 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 wanted to, I wanted the buck to stop with me. I was, I was kind of burned out on I, I had a good relationship with everybody there. I, I enjoyed my years at, at Hellman Associates. I truly did. I made some terrific friends. I learned a lot. I hope people learned from me. I think I made the, the studio a lot of money. But, um, but uh, I got to a point um, in 19 probably 85 really, when I started thinking seriously about it, that I got to a point where I felt like I just, I, I want to just jump off and uh, sink or swim. I, I'm pretty sure I was going to swim, but I was kind of burned out on that kind of balance that I had to manage with maybe, by then it was probably down to eight. Eight kind of, some of them were kind of temperamental illustrators, some of them were not, but that balance you have to, that tightrope you have to walk between the guy that runs the studio and is responsible for the bottom line, the overhead, the building we're all in, the support staff, and the artists that are sensitive to the projects they're getting. And I had a lot to do with assigning projects, um, although we were at a point then where a lot of the projects came aimed at specific artists because we developed our personal style. but. But at the same time, I was kind of the guy in the middle. You know, I was the guy in between that that could understand where um, Robert Hellman was coming from when when he'd say, you know, we can't afford to be taking these kind of editorial jobs; they don't pay anything. And the artist, on the other hand, uh, in his in his space somewhere in the building, that says, "How come I'm not getting any more editorial jobs?" You know, I mean, we we need to, you know, I, I need to have some fun. And I'm the guy in the middle trying to answer both those questions. And eventually I got to the point where I thought, yeah, this is okay, you know, I, I like these people, I like coming here every day, um, but I just want to go to my own place and worry about my own work. A Rolling Stone happened about the same time because Fred had found me uh, when he was in Dallas in the early 80s. Uh, then he went to um, I think he went to Regardi's magazine in Washington, D.C. And then um, he got his job. I, he told me once that this is the job he had been preparing for his whole life, the, the art director at Rolling, our directorship at Rolling Stone. He's gone from there now. But, um, but uh, I think the first assignment he gave me for Rolling Stone was in 86 or 87. And he hadn't been there very long, and I hadn't been off on my own very long. And I think, and it was a portrait of um, Chuck Berry and Willie Dixon, a, a Chess Records kind of tribute to two, two, you know, musicians that are important to me anyway. So it was great. And uh, I, at the very same time, this is the mid '80s, um, I started doing um, work for Playboy too, and then. I got to be a regular with Playboy. Um, Rolling Stone called quite a bit. Uh, I went 
through a little burst there with the New Yorker. I think I, I won a couple medals with Playboy. The one, the one I can remember was uh, an installment in their History of Jazz series, and I did a New Orleans funeral procession, and that won a medal. Um, I did, uh, oh boy, I, I did, you know, stories by Nora Ephron, I think, and John Updike, and I uh, illustrated that kind of fiction, which is great fun to do. Um, and it didn't, I'd say sexual tension and women were involved in maybe, you know, one out of four of those. It was not necessarily that kind of deal. And then later, you know, let's see, in the 90s, I guess, early 90s, they assigned, mid 90s, they assigned me the little Playboy After Hours spot in the front of the magazine every month. So I had a regular gig with Playboy and that, that was that was nice for a while, but then it, it, it you know how many urban like people out on the town images can you create? I did one a month for probably five years, so that'd be sixty. I've given actually I've given a lot of the I did them small, you know they they were spots, and they were the originals are about that big. And our Christmas party that we have at the house has grown; it's gotten way out of hand. It's too big, but uh, it's fun. And and one of the um, one of the uh, <clears throat> one of the features of the party is that everybody puts their name in a hat when they come in the door that night, and then we have a, a drawing for one of a small piece of art original that I've done. You know, the Playboy relationship was good. Uh, I had a great time about ten years ago. Uh, Marshall Arisman and myself and the two senior art directors of Playboy went to Santa Fe for a. Uh, a long weekend to talk to students down there and you know it's the only time I've ever in my life I've ever gone somewhere on Playboy's uh, expense account and we had a wonderful time as you might guess. Um, the uh, let's see Playboy uh, the Atlantic Monthly was was fairly regular with me back then and and, um, and then Entertainment Weekly came along and they were they were great fun to work for and that's changed now. I mean, you know, those magazines are, I don't think it's so much that they've changed their taste in illustration as it is that they've um, cut back their illustration budgets, unfortunately. I mean, they told me that in so many words, they just called one time and said, um, we won't be calling you that much any, anymore, don't take it personally. Um, I, the National Football League, I, I noticed that, um, that every, Every um, week, they produced a, a number of um, of illustrated program covers, and I thought that looked like fun stuff to do. And so, at Hellman Associates, we got a hold of the National Football League office in L.A. and sent them a big uh, portfolio of our work, of all the guys' work in the in the group. And the next season rolled around, and we got about I don't know, probably eight covers to do. A different. I passed them out to different artists, and we we developed a great relationship with the NFL and their um, their art director back then. They were they were interesting assignments. They usually dealt with the team and some aspect of the city that the team represented. And and the NFL is high profile, you know. I mean, it it was kind of weird. The first uh, the first game I went to after um, one of my programs was used. I think it was a. I think I went to Chicago and went to a Bears game. I've been a Bears fan forever. Um, and, uh, and it was kind of odd to leave the stadium after the game and see all these programs scattered around on the seats and on the concrete, you know, with my image on the, on the front of it. That, that's, a, that's a kick.